Well, we'd like to bid you all a very warm and hearty welcome to our uh, evening prayer meeting tonight, and we trust the Lord will bless us as we come around his word in a few moments' time, and then as we would seek the face of God in prayer. So again, we'd just like to bid you all a very warm welcome. If you're watching in uh, from whenever you're watching in from, we bid you welcome as well, and trust the Lord will bless you uh, wherever you're watching in from tonight. We're going to open our meeting by singing the words of hymn number 637. Here from the world we turn Jesus to seek. Here may his loving voice tenderly speak. And perhaps our sister will just play the first uh, chorus, or the first verse, to, to see if we're familiar with the tune. <laughs> We sing the words of this lovely hymn. That's our prayer, that we would turn from the world and we would see and seek after the Lord Jesus Christ. We're just going to do that now. We're going to commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Let us all bow, please, and seek the face of the Lord in prayer. Our eternal God and our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we, O oh God, bow humbly and reverently as we would come into thy presence tonight. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the freedom and the opportunity that we have to come. And Lord, it is not upon anything which we could ever do or say or pay, but Lord, it is upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for him who loved us and gave himself for us. We thank you that he left the splendors of heaven and that he came into this old sin-cursed world. We thank you, O God, that he took into union with his deity, a human nature. And Lord, we thank you that he lived under the law of God. We thank you that he came not to destroy or abolish it, but Lord, he came to fulfill it. We thank you that he offered up that perfect obedience for each and every one who will look to him. Lord, we thank you most of all for his death. We thank you that he went a little farther. And Lord, he went the whole way to the cross. And there he died in our guilty room instead. We thank you, O God, that he bore the curse of the broken law. 
on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, that he was our substitute that day in Calvary's cross. And, O oh God, as thy wrath fell upon thy darling son, O oh Lord, we can scarce take it in. Why he would do it for a guilty, hell-deserving sinner like me. But, Lord, I thank you that he went and he died according to the Scriptures. And, Lord, we thank you tonight that he is alive forevermore. We thank you that we do not serve one who is dead and who is not alive, but, Lord, we serve one who rose from the dead. He had the power to lay down his life, and he had the power to raise it up again. And, Lord, we thank you that he lives forever in the power of an endless life. And, Lord, we thank you that he ascended back to glory where he ever lives to make intercession as our great high priest and as our mediator before thy face. And, Lord, we thank you that one day he is coming again to take every blood-bought and every redeemed sinner home to be with thee in glory for all eternity. And, Lord, we thank you that that is the hope and that is the truth of the gospel tonight. We thank you for every head bowed in thy presence tonight, every uh, one who has been able to uh, come to the house of God tonight. And we thank you for those who are watching in for, from wherever they are watching in from in the world tonight. And Lord, we do pray for thy blessing to be upon this meeting. Lord, we're not here to, uh, to worship ourselves. We're not here to present ourselves. But Lord, we're here to worship thee. And oh God, we humbly and reverently ask that Lord, thou wast come and presence thyself with us. Oh Lord, we are so poor and we are so needy. And yet, O oh God, that is think upon us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that thou hast promised to presence thyself where the two or three are gathered together in thy name, that, Lord, thou wouldst be in the midst of them and not to bless. And, Lord, we claim that promise before thee tonight. We do pray for a tangible sense of the divine presence to be in this meeting house tonight. And, Lord, wherever people are watching in from tonight in their homes, Lord, we pray that thou wouldst meet with them as well. And, Lord, we pray that we would know the, the voice of the Lord speaking to us through thy word tonight. We do ask and pray, O oh God, that thou wouldst bless every head bowed in thy presence, everyone watching in. Lord, let us know that as our faces differ, so do our needs. And I do pray that thou wouldst meet every one of us at the point of, of their need. We do think of the, the congregation here, and we do commit it afresh unto thee. We do think of thy servant who labors here week by week we pray for him and his family O oh god that thou wast bless him that thou wast give him a fruitful uh, ministry in this corner of thy vineyard we do think of the elders and the committee lord here as well we do pray for them that lord you would give every uh, man wisdom give them unity in the holy ghost we pray we do pray for the congregation we do pray for every family and every individual associated with the work here every boy and every girl every young person and every older person we do pray for every one of them lord that thy blessing would be upon them and lord if there be any in our midst tonight and they have loved ones still outside the family and fold of god we do pray that this would be the very night when the spirit of the living god would come and bring conviction of sin to their heart and that lord they would bow the knee and repent of their sin and trust in our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray for our land tonight, Lord. Let us know the situation. Let us know the, the needs of our land tonight. And we do pray for it. We do pray for a God to pour out of thy Holy Spirit. From the windows of heaven, we pray for a blessing to be poured out that we would not have room, O oh God, to contain it. Lord, this land has erred and has journeyed far, so far away from thy word and from the uh, godliness and decency. Lord, we think of that verse where it says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach. And oh God, how sin is being promoted tonight. So many sins are being uh, lifted up and praised and glorified, Lord, which are totally contrary to thy word. Oh God, I pray in wrath, remember mercy. Oh Lord, bring, uh, stop the mouths of those wicked and ungodly men and women who are seeking to further wicked and sinful agendas oh lord we pray that that was if the lord if you won't save them the lord silence them we pray and lord help us as believers tonight to stand for god in this day and generation in which you've placed us oh god and lord help us to be men and women and young people tonight who are holy and as daniel of old said that are strong and do exploits for god and lord we humbly and reverently ask and pray these things in jesus precious and most worthy name. 
Amen. Amen. If you could turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. We're turning to Luke's Gospel tonight, uh, chapter 11, for a scripture reading. And while you're turning to the place, can I say it's a great privilege for me to be here tonight. I would like to thank your minister and session for the invitation to come along tonight and to share in your prayer meeting. And I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank you as a congregation for your prayerful and practical support for myself and uh, my fellow brethren in the college. We deeply appreciate your support in whatever way, and especially at this time as we are coming to the end of our examinations. So at the end of this, this weekend, this week, we will have completed our exams and we can't wait to see Friday evening coming. So we're turning tonight to Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. And I simply want to read the first four verses. This is the word of God. And it came to pass that as, certain, uh, that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We trust the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts for his own name's sake and glory. And let us just bow in a moment's prayer again before we come to God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of thy holy word. And we ask and pray for the enablement of the spirit to come and to take away every distracting thought from our minds, O God. We do pray that, Lord, thou was take captive every thought and, Lord, bring it into captivity. Lord, we pray for the enablement of the Spirit, for myself to bring thy word. I pray for power. I pray for the authority of the Spirit of the living God to enable me to preach thy word this evening. And, Lord, I do pray for those listening in, those in the meeting house tonight, that, Lord, thou wouldst give them listening ears and receptive hearts to thy word. And, Lord, maybe we have a teachable spirit tonight. Lord, we perhaps have read this many times before and heard it preached upon before. But Lord, I pray that it would come with freshness to your hearts tonight and would be a word of instruction and encouragement to each and every one of us this evening. Lord, I humbly ask and pray these things in Jesus' precious and most worthy name. Amen. Amen. I would like to uh, speak uh, upon these four verses, but I want to bring my thoughts particularly from a few words found in verse number one. And it says there, uh, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. And that's what I want to think upon tonight, an important instruction on prayer. I remember back to my high school days, that's quite some time ago now, and I remember that our school had a motto, and that motto was this, learning the most important thing we will do today, tomorrow, and every day for the rest of our lives. I remember that uh, motto being drummed into us in assembly, and even as you journey throughout the school, that motto was placed, uh, painted on the wall, so that we would be reminded as students and staff as well of the importance of learning and how that learning is not just something which is contained to a few short years in primary school or high school or college years or university, but that learning is something which we will do until our very dying day, that day when our time on earth is finished. The disciples here were in training as well, and they were under the instruction of the greatest teacher of all, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only his teaching ministry, but also on his prayer and intercessory and the miracles which he carried out as well. For the disciples, just like us here tonight as believers, the disciples had much to learn, not only how to live as a Christian, but also on how they were to serve the Lord 
in their day and generation. And just as they had to learn, so you and I as believers here tonight, we have to continue to learn, to continue to grow and to mature as believers. We've never, we won't reach the apex in our Christian experience just yet. There is always something which we can learn. There's always something which we can glean from God's Word. There's always a lesson which perhaps we need to be taught in our life's experience. And so that's why tonight I want to think upon this an important instruction on prayer. The first thought I would like to consider with you tonight is the seeker of this instruction. The seeker of this instruction. Look, notice there with me at verse 1. It says there, And it came to pass that he, as he was praying, that the Lord Jesus Christ was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now look here, records for us that it was a, a disciple who came seeking this instruction. Now we are not told specifically who this disciple was. It could have been one of the twelve disciples, or it could have been one of the larger group of disciples which had followed the Lord Jesus Christ, or it may have, be, have been one of the 72 appointed for missionary service. If you turn back there to Luke chapter 10, just the previous chapter, Luke chapter 10 and the first one, and it tells us there, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 other also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. So there we see that the Lord not only had his 12 disciples who were uh, spending uh, day in and day out in his company, not only was there a, a larger multitude of, of people who followed the Lord about the place, but there was also the, this uh, large number of 70 who he, whom he had appointed to go out and to carry out missionary service. Now, we may never know who this disciple was, but what we have here recorded for us tonight is something which is a, an important lesson, something which we may never know the name of the individual who asked this, but it is a, an important lesson which you and I can ask the Lord tonight ourselves, something which we need to be taught, something which is of benefit to us here tonight. Notice here his interest. Now, why did this, disi this disciple come and ask the Lord this? Because he was interested. That's what caused him to ask this question, Lord, or th ask, this, ask this request, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, I must ask the question, well, what, what got him interested to ask this? Well, if you look back there at verse 1, and it says, and it came to pass that as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples came unto him. So there we see the reason why this disciple was interested, because he had heard the Lord Jesus Christ pray. Imagine being a disciple in, in those days. Imagine spending your days listening to the Lord Jesus Christ preaching and teaching the word of God, telling men and women to repent and to believe the gospel, telling them that he is the only way to God, telling them that if they want to be saved, they need to be saved, that they, their sin must be cleansed, their sin must be dealt with. Imagine seeing all those people whom the Lord Jesus Christ had perhaps brought sight to, those who could not walk, yet the Lord enabled them to walk again, and even the raising of the dead. Imagine witnessing Lazarus coming out of, of the tomb. Imagine being there when the Lord touched the widow of Nain's son's uh, casket. And that young man rose up. Imagine witnessing that. But here we see that this disciple was interested because he heard the Lord pray. Imagine hearing the Lord pray. I'm sure in your life's experience you've come across godly individuals who really knew what it was to pray. But imagine hearing the Son of God pray. Not just for a few moments, but to hear him pray for hours. Because the, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ spent many, many nights in prayer. He was busy all day preaching and teaching, 
and he spent the night in prayer with his father. Imagine hearing the Lord Jesus Christ pray. I came across this little illustration where uh, a man who had a donkey uh, was trying to uh, teach it or trying to, to train it. And so what he was going to do, he got this stick and he whacked this donkey around the ears. And then another man witnessed this and said, what are you doing? Why are you whacking this donkey? And the man says, I must get its attention if I want to train it. Now, that may or may not be uh, particularly true about donkeys, but it surely has a, an important lesson for us as, as, as people here tonight, that there must be an, 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 an interest awakened before learning can occur. And that's what had come upon this disciple. His interest had been awakened because he had heard the Lord Jesus Christ pray. And truly, if we could hear the Lord Jesus Christ pray, Oh, how that would humble us tonight. How that would cause us to rejoice that there is one in heaven tonight who prays for us. There is one tonight in the glory who is at the Father's right hand, that place of honor, that place of fellowship. And he is fulfilling his great high priestly role in making our prayers perfect before the Father's face. You know, the Westminster Shorter Catechism in question number 98 asks this question, what is prayer? And the answer given is, prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God for things agreeable to his will in the name of Christ with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. So we thought about the interest of this disciple, but we also notice here the humility of this disciple. This, this disciple was humble. He, he was humbly seeking the Lord for help, because he, was, he had realized that if he was ever going to pray like the Savior, well, then he would have to be taught by the Savior how to pray. This man was humble because he was not full of pride. If he was full of pride, he would not have asked. Is it not uh, common of man to think that he can do whatever, that he knows everything, that he doesn't need to be shown how to do something, that he is smart enough in, in and of himself to work out whatever problems that he may come across. Surely we see that in our world tonight where man is trying to, uh, they've built a machine to try and work out how the world came into existence, and yet they deny, they, they hate what God has said in his word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. A man thinks that he is smart enough and he is bright enough to work out every problem, that he is able to overcome every obstacle and every difficulty which he will face in his life. You know, brethren and sisters, tonight let us be like this disciple, not only interested in knowing how to pray, but let us also be humble. Let us be, hum let us be humble in, in realizing and admitting that we don't, we don't have all the answers. We are not able to pray at times as we ought to. We don't have all the answers. We don't, know, we don't have all the wherewithal. But we know someone who does. We know someone who can. We know someone who is able to teach us tonight. And that is the Lord. Let us be humble like this disciple tonight. If you turn back again to chapter 10 and the verse number 17. We're thinking again there of this uh, number of 70. And it says there in chapter 10 of Luke's gospel, verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. There we see that some of the, the, these uh, 70 disciples, they were full of joy because they had seen the demons cast out of individuals and they were rejoicing because they had did it. But yet it was only by the power of Christ that they could do such a, a task. And yet, brethren and sisters, tonight it is only through the power of the Lord, it is only through the enablement of the Holy Spirit tonight that we are able to pray, that we should desire and seek to pray in the Spirit. 
as godly men and women of old have done so. They prayed in the Spirit, they labored in the Spirit, and the Spirit enabled them to pray. The Spirit enabled them to get through to God in prayer. And that's what we need tonight. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit to get through to God tonight in prayer. And know that we would know the Lord's presence, enabling us and strengthening us to pray. You see, the Christian is not to rejoice tonight in what they think they can do. The Christian is not to rejoice tonight in what so-called or whatever talents the Lord has been pleased to bestow upon them. But we are to rejoice tonight in this great fact that we're saved. That we have been redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That there is therefore now no condemnation tonight for you, dear believer. There is therefore no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. Because that's what the Bible tells us. Because we are in Christ tonight. We are united to Christ and that's what ought to thrill our souls tonight. Not anything of who we are or what we can do or what we think we can do. But the one who has saved us by his precious blood. Not only was this uh, disciple interested, not only was he humble, but we see here as well that he was teachable. We see here his teachability. You see, he was in this frame of mind where he was willing to be taught. And can I ask you tonight, are you willing to be taught? Are you willing for the Lord to come alongside tonight and to teach you something from his word? No matter where you are in your Christian experience tonight, no matter whether you're a, a, a babe in Christ tonight or somebody who's a seasoned saint, we all need to be taught. We all ought to have that teachable spirit tonight. Because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. As the Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter uh, 16. If you turn with me there to John's gospel chapter 16. John's gospel chapter 16 verse 13 says. The Lord Jesus speaking here. How be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. And there we see that the Spirit of the living God is the one who teaches us and guides us in the Word of God to reveal Christ unto us. And if you're seeking to know more of the, the Lord's Word tonight, if you're seeking to grow deeper in your Christian walk and experience with the Lord tonight, well then, you ought to have that teachable spirit, dear believer, tonight. That's something which each and every one of us needs to have. Whether you're standing in this position behind the pulpit or working the sound or perhaps just simply sitting in a pew tonight or watching in from wherever you're watching in from tonight, we must all have that teachable spirit. Now, this is something which we cannot just, you know, a couple of weeks or have a crash course in and we will suddenly become experts in prayer. This is a lifelong engagement. This is a lifelong exercise uh, seeking the Lord's face in prayer daily, wherever that may be, in, in, the, in the closet, but also in the public prayer meeting, seeking to grow, seeking to listen to others pray and to hear how we can pray perhaps better, seeing how we can pray more effectively for different matters and different individuals. Prayer is something, brethren and sisters tonight, it's, it's not something which we can... Uh, simply spend a, a, a short amount of time and expect to know everything. But no, prayer, it takes effort. Prayer takes labor. It takes time. And it takes commitment. And I'm so glad to see so many out of this prayer meeting tonight. Because you're demonstrating that you're committed, that you're interested, and that you're wanting to be taught from the Word of God, and that you're wanting to seek the face of God tonight at the throne of heavenly grace and prayer. This is something which takes time, it takes effort, and it takes commitment. Have you got that time? Are you going to set aside that time, dear Christian, 
perhaps getting up half an hour earlier in the morning to seek the face of God, or perhaps doing away with something else throughout your day to take that time to pray. Are you going to take that time? Are you going to make that effort? I'm glad you've made the effort to come out tonight to the prayer meeting because it takes commitment as well. And sadly, so many of God's people tonight, I fear, they're they're not willing to give up that time. They're not willing to make the effort and they're not willing to commit to prayer. Perhaps they think that prayer doesn't work. Well, you know, brethren and sisters, tonight, let this be a reminder to every one of us that prayer changes things. Each and every one of us in this meeting tonight are an answer to somebody's prayers, whether that was a mum or dad or an auntie or uncle or granny or granddad or Sunday school teachers or a minister's prayers. Somebody has prayed for you. Somebody has prayed for me along my life's journey that I would be saved and that I would go on with God. And somebody has prayed that for you. And that is why it's so important that we take that time, that we make that effort and we are committed to prayer because prayer changes things. Oh yes, the devil would say, don't bother praying. The devil would say, forget about the prayer meeting. But yet, prayer is the powerhouse of the, the prayer meeting is the powerhouse of the church. And I'm glad that you're here tonight to pray, to pray for this work, to pray for our land, to pray for the different needs that we have tonight. So we've considered, first of all, the one seeking instruction. But secondly, let us consider the expert for this instruction. Chapter 11, verse 1 tells us who this expert is. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. You see, this disciple had heard the Lord Jesus Christ pray. And here he was coming to the very one whom he heard praying. Here he was coming to the expert. Nobody could pray like the Savior. Oh yes, I'm sure that John the Baptist was a mighty man of prayer as well. I'm sure that going back into the Old Testament, I'm sure that Moses was a mighty man of prayer too. And Joseph, think of Joseph in the prison cell singing praises unto God. Think of Abel, before Abel was killed. Imagine listening to Abel pray and praise God as he was going to present his uh, blood sacrifice upon the altar. But none could compare to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other uh, great high priest tonight but the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the great high priest in Israel's day, even the priests, the the, 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 the Levitical priests, They would have offered up many prayers, but none would compare to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever this individual was, whoever this disciple was who came, we know that he was a follower of the Lord. And he was received into the Lord's presence, and the Lord listened to his petition. And he said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Now notice in that language there, he's not just praying for himself. There's another sign he's not Uh, somebody who's proud. He's not selfish. He's not thinking about himself, but he's desiring this for those other disciples as well. And that's my desire for you tonight, that as we come around the Word of God and that the Lord would speak to us and that the Lord would apply His Word to your heart and that the Lord would teach me, but that the Lord would teach you as well. Lord, teach me. Teach us tonight how to pray. Teach us how to pray. For prayer is how we communicate with our Heavenly Father. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ spent many hours in prayer. For that was how he communed with his Heavenly Father. We think of that special uh, uh, relationship that they had. That bond between the Father and the Son in the Godhead. And that's how they communicated. Brethren and sisters tonight, that's how we are to communicate with God. Yes, God speaks to us through his word, but prayer is how we are able and we have that privilege to talk to our Heavenly Father as adopted sons and daughters tonight. Luke's gospel records for us many different occasions when Christ prayed before significant moments in his ministry. If you turn back with me there to chapter 3 of Luke's gospel. We'll just look at a few of these briefly for your own benefit 
I will read them out as well, so if you're taking notes or you can listen again to get them down. Chapter 3 in the verse 21. It says there, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And there we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, before he commenced his earthly ministry, he was baptized of John. But not only that, he was praying. Then if you turn over to chapter 6 of Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 12. And it says there, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. There we see the Lord Jesus Christ. He went up into a mountain, set aside from the world, just alone, to get alone with his Father. And there he prayed all night. And then if you turn with me to chapter 9, verse 18. And it tells us there, And it came to pass as he was alone praying. His disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? There we see that he was praying. And there his disciples were with him. And then verses 28 and 29 there of Luke, of Luke chapter 9. And it says there, And it came to pass about eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. There was his transfiguration. But what was he doing? He was praying. I wonder, brethren and sisters, tonight, do, do we pray before significant moments in our life? Do we pray? Do we commit every situation of our lives to the Lord in prayer? Turn over to Luke chapter 22. And this is the last reference I'll turn you to in this part, Luke 22. And the verse number uh, 41, Luke 22, verse 41. And it says there, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there we see the Lord Jesus Christ praying in the garden before he was going to be uh, taken and crucified by wicked and ungodly men. Do we pray before significant moments in our lives? Do we put a, a, a high priority upon prayer? As the old saying goes, is prayer your uh, uh, steer, steering wheel or is it a spare tire? Only using it in, in emergencies. Prayer ought to be our steering wheel. We ought to be committing everything in our lives to the Lord in prayer as believers. Matthew Henry made this comment on this verse. He said, Lord, teach us to pray is a good prayer and a very needful one. For Jesus Christ only can teach us by his word and spirit how to pray. And there, Matthew Henry got it spot on because he realized there himself that it's a very needful lesson. And it is only the Lord Jesus Christ that can teach us by his word and spirit how to pray. Surely this ought to challenge you and I tonight as believers. Are we setting aside a, a, a specific time or times in our day to pray? Now, I'm not saying you have to pray for hours upon end, but even as you're driving along, not to close your eyes, of course, but just to pray to the Lord about a, a matter. If the Lord puts somebody or something upon your heart, just to pray, Lord, heal somebody, or Lord, save that loved one of mine. You know, prayer is something which we have the privilege to do. It's something which nobody is hindering us. Nobody is saying uh, tonight out there, no, you can't pray. Nobody can stop you praying tonight. Oh, yes, the devil perhaps will throw uh, distractions in your way. But when you get down and really seek the face of God, well, the Lord will meet and the Lord will pour out his spirit and enable us to pray if we set aside that time. We've thought about the expert there for this instruction. But lastly, let us consider the instruction for the seeker from the expert. 
the instruction for the seeker from the expert. And we have that here in verses 2 to 4. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We see here that the Lord then proceeds to teach this disciple and the others what we commonly know as the Lord's Prayer. This type of prayer is only recorded twice in Scripture, and this is the second instance in which it has been recorded. The first instance is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, if you want to turn with me there. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. It is uh, where the Lord Jesus Christ is on the Mount of Olives, and he is carrying out what is known as his, as his Olivet Discourse. And in verses uh, 19 to uh, 23, he is teaching of the Lord's Prayer. Or perhaps I've, I've maybe, you know, it's, uh, sorry, it's uh, verse 9 to verse 13. And we see there that there is, when you take the time and, and read down through Matthew's account of the Lord's Prayer, we see that there is some little differences between it and the one recorded in Luke's Gospel. We see here that in Matthew's Gospel, the Lord's Prayer here was the Lord setting aside the time to uh, properly teach to his disciples the Lord's Prayer, teaching them how they ought to pray when they were engaging in prayer. And then in Luke's gospel, we have the instance where, of course, we know that this disciple had come to the Lord and had requested the Lord to teach, teach him and the other disciples how to pray. Now, we do not know uh, where the location was in Luke's gospel here where the disciple had approached the Lord to ask him how to pray. But we see here from these differences in the prayer that it was Christ's intention that it was not his intention, sorry, for us to repeat words off every time we pray, not to repeat the same words over and over again. But it was the Lord's desire and principle here to set aside or to lay down a, a basic uh, model or pattern for us to pray, uh, to, to use when we are engaging in prayer. We see there that he begins by saying, Our Father. And this is the first invocation in this uh, prayer. And as always, our prayers are to be addressed to none other than our Heavenly Father. Our prayers are not to be addressed to any man or any, any church or any saint for that matter. Think of how many people tonight, they think they are doing right by praying to saints. But there is no warrant for that in Scripture. The Bible does not tell us anywhere to pray to saints. And even here, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is, is telling his disciples to pray to their heavenly Father, the one whom they know through redemption, the one who has been able, whom they have been able to have a relationship with through the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Lord Jesus said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you see, the Lord Jesus Christ came to glorify the Father. He came to reveal the Father. And that is why he says here, he begins the prayer by saying, Our Father. We are to bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father, as the Lord Jesus Christ has laid this down for us. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, he prayed to him. And so through Christ, we are enabled to pray to our Heavenly Father. And this demonstrates to us tonight that this prayer is specifically for believers and exclusively for believers alone. For those who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior, those who have been saved by his grace and brought into the family and fold of God, those who are united with Christ, those who are adopted sons of God here, the believers to commence their prayer by communing with their heavenly Father because we are his children through adoption. If you turn there with me to Galatians chapter 6, and you will see this for yourself. Galatians chapter 6, 
and the, or sorry, Galatians chapter 4, and the verse 6 to 7, Galatians 4. Paul writing to the church at Galatia there, he says in verse uh, 4 of Galatians, or sorry, verse 6 of Galatians chapter 4. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Isn't that wonderful, brethren and sisters, tonight? That we, as adopted sons of God, we are a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are an heir of God through Christ tonight. And we think of what the Lord Jesus Christ, all those wonderful blessings and riches that he has purchased for us, and one day we will receive, because we are his blood bought and redeemed children. But we can cry unto God tonight, Abba, Father. Like the little Jewish boys there, where they would cry unto their father in prayer. We can cry unto God tonight as his children and say, Abba, Father. But also here the Lord spoke about reverencing the Lord's name, for he says, Hallowed be thy name. And here the being of God, it is resem- or he is res- uh, represented by the name God. For he has revealed himself by creation. And most importantly, not only through his creation, but through redemption. And this is a desire for others as well, to reverence God for who he is holy. Sadly, so many tonight do not reverence the name of the Lord. There's many churches so called out there. And they think that they can come into the Lord's presence any way they like. They think that they can shout and roar and dance into his presence. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us here to hallow, to reverence the name of the Lord. Because God is holy. God is infinite. God is is eternal. And we are simply creatures of the dust. And who are we to come thinking that we are so special into his presence. But we ought to hallow his name. We ought to show respect and reverence to the Lord's name tonight. And you know, we can do that through him. Yes, the Bible does tell us to come boldly onto the throne of grace and prayer where we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. That is true. But does that, that does not mean that we can come any way we like. That doesn't mean that we can come willy-nilly into the presence of God. And that is another reason why we ought to have our hearts prepared before we come to the place of prayer, before we come to the meeting, that the Lord will prepare our hearts for his word. If, you, uh, let, if I read this verse to you in Psalm 34 and verse 3, and the psalmist says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. You see, the psalmist there was right. He was wanting to exalt the name of the Lord. He wasn't looking to exalt his own name or the name of some other individual. But let us exalt the name of the Lord. Let us reverence the Lord's name tonight. Let us hallow his name tonight as he rightly deserves. Then the Savior said, Thy kingdom come. And that was a desire for God's rule to be more established in the world intensively and widely. widely. So that this will be his will will be carried out across the face of the earth as in heaven i wonder do we pray that that god's will will be done yes believer i know it at times it's very easy to come lord do this for me do that for me but do we ever say lord if thy will if it be thy will you know so often we can get so caught up in our own lives and our own circumstances where we think that we know what's best and we know better than god And God, we need this in our lives. We need you to do that for us. But we ought to say, if it be thy will, thy will be done, O God. As the Savior taught here, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then he goes on to say, give us this day our daily bread. You see, the Lord was teaching here for the disciples, for the believer to be totally dependent upon God. Now, that word bread there doesn't simply just mean uh, physical food, but it is uh, in reference to every need of ours, physical, spiritual, temporal. We must 
seek every blessing. We must seek every need of ours from the Lord. When we get up in the morning, seek his face for health and strength, for grace to live for him. Not just for the physical needs of our body, but also for the spiritual needs. That the Lord would sustain us physically and spiritually as believers. But not only that, he goes on to say, and forgive us our sins. And as believers tonight, we are not sinlessly perfect. And we sin against the Lord day and daily, in thought, word, and deed. And that's why, as believers tonight, we must confess our sins to him. As the Savior said here, and forgive us our sins. And thank God tonight, we can come to the Lord. And the Lord is able to forgive us our sins upon the basis of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Or there is no forgiveness for sins. And that is why we must come upon the basis of the Lord Jesus Christ's blood. And ask the Lord to forgive us. To cleanse us afresh in his precious blood. And to forgive and to fill us with thy Holy Spirit. We need to be, we need to be uh, those who confess our sins day and daily. To keep short accounts with God. To keep ourselves right before God. If because of our hearts not right, then our walk will, will not be right. And if our walk's not right, then our testimony won't be right. And that's why it's so important, brethren and sisters, that our hearts are right. That our hearts are cleansed. That our conscience is clear before the Lord tonight. It's wonderful to have a clear conscience, isn't it? Think of all those tonight in the world who don't have a clear conscience. Those perhaps who have done some wicked deed in the past and perhaps justice hasn't caught up with them, but yet is eating away at them, wondering, are they going to face uh, the reprimands of the law for whatever they did? Are they going to be found out in the end for what they've done? But yet we can have a clear conscience. We can have the joy of sins forgiven. We can know that fresh cleansing in the precious blood of Christ if we come and we ask the Lord to forgive us. And lastly there he says, and lead us not into temptation. Now he is, he is desiring to set this example out that it would be his will that we would not be in a situation where we would not be exposed to be tempted then falling into sin. Now being tempted is not a sin tonight. But if we yield ourselves to that temptation, then we are sinning. Also that we would be delivered from evil, particularly from the devil. If you turn with me there to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and the verse number 15. And Paul writing to the church at Ephesus there, he says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Then if we were to turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and the verse number 11. And Paul says there, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. He said there in verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, each and every one of us knows tonight that the devil is seeking to cause us to fall. And brethren and sisters, let not that discourage you tonight. But deal with it in a, a spiritual and proper manner. And acknowledging that, yes, there is one who is seeking to, for me to, to fall. But I have one who is, in, who is stronger, who is almighty. I have one who is able to keep me from falling. As Jude said, to the one who is able to, to keep you from falling. And to present you spotless before his face. But we ought to pray this, that we would not be led into temptation as believers here tonight. So we've considered briefly this evening an important instruction on prayer, where we thought about the seeking of instruction, how each and every one of us must uh, desire and need to be taught how to pray. 
Then we considered the expert for this instruction, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ alone. And then we considered lastly there the instruction from the, seek, from the expert to the seekers. And may you, each and every one of us tonight have that genuine interest in prayer. May each and every one of us have that humble and teachable spirit to grow and to mature in our prayer lives. As I said, that motto in my old school was learning the most important thing we will do today, tomorrow and every day for the rest of our lives. Well, surely here's a, an important lesson that we can learn day and daily, that the Lord would teach us how to pray. I came across this little quote on Saturday. Um, uh, the, if some of you are aware of the, the North American uh, church has a, a magazine called Current, which would be their version of our Vision magazine. And I just happened to be uh, reading through that uh, magazine and I came across an interview that the Reverend Gallagher had with the Reverend Beggs uh, over Zoom. And I'd just like to read uh, this little quote uh, before I close my message tonight, which the Reverend Beggs said. And Mr. Gallagher was asking the Reverend Beggs about the early days and those uh, prayer meetings uh, in the early days of the denomination. And this is what Mr. Beggs said. He said, those prayer meetings weren't always orthodox but the Spirit of God was there. They were men whom God had taught to pray. We should never lose sight of the place of prayer in the work. And I was struck as I read that little quote from Mr. Beggs that there was men in those prayer meetings and women as well who knew what it was how to pray. There was nights of prayer. There was longing. There was agonizing. There was tears in prayer. Oh, to be in a prayer meeting like that again. Oh, that our province and our denomination would return to prayer meetings like that, where men and women are desperate for God to intervene in their land, for the Lord to intervene in their own lives. That we would be men and women who are full of the Holy Ghost, men and women who know what it is to intercede and to see answers to prayer, to see revival come to our province once again. Oh, that we would never lose sight of the place of prayer and the work. And that is a desire for my heart, and I'm sure it's a desire on your heart tonight. It's a desire for our uh, elders and our ministers that we would never lose sight of the place of prayer and the work. As I said at the beginning of my message, pray, the prayer meeting, it's a powerhouse of the church. And if we lose that desire, if we lose that vision of the, of the, the importance of prayer, then we're not going to see a blessing. But when we get down to prayer and we seek the face of God in prayer, then the Lord will pour out his spirit because he said he would. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon those who are thirsty. I'd like to thank you for your attention. May the Lord bless his word to each and every one of our hearts tonight. We'd like to thank those who were watching in online and bid them farewell now as we get down to our time of prayer. And just a few matters for prayer.